If I do a quick Google search for Bluehost review, the top result rates Bluehost at 4.8 out of 5. Hm, here's an honest look. 4.9 stars out of 5 with basically no cons. Okay, okay, let's do one more. It's some, um, uh, wow, 4.9 out of 5 again. Basically, Bluehost is like the perfect web hosting company, right? Well, if I'd look up real people reviews instead of bot farm websites on Google, they all say to avoid Bluehost at all costs, comparing it to the plague and specifying that the only reason Bluehost is recommended so highly is because they pay people to do it. So I've actually bought a Bluehost plan myself and not even the cheapest one. I've got the Choice Plus to give them a fair chance. I've been testing it out for the past six months and I can confirm. It's absolutely the worst web hosting plan I've reviewed on this channel. Like, I feel genuinely sorry and angry for anyone who has to buy this. Let me show you what I mean. On average, this $6 a month Bluehost plan loaded my website in 5.5 seconds, while a $2.5 plan from Webhost Most did it in 1.3 seconds, InterServer and their 2.5 plan loaded in 0.9 seconds as well, Chemicloud and their $3 plan came in at 1.1 second, Hostinger and their $3 plan was 1.2 seconds. Taking into account the margin for error, they're all pretty much the same, except for Bluehost, of course, which was more than five times slower in absolutely every test. I actually track the performance of my test websites extensively by sending a bot to them every minute to check how fast the server responds and if the website is even online at that moment. Bluehost was no exception. In those six months, my website went down 32 times for a total of three hours. And look at this Mickey Mouse shit graph. Even when online, the website was so unstable that my response times kept jumping up and down like crazy. The maximum response time was 2.8 seconds, the lowest 0.2. So there's 14 times difference between my website speed on any given day, meaning that some days the server responds in 0.2 seconds and my website loads in 2.1 second, which is still not good, but it's passable. And another day, the server decides to respond in 2.8 seconds and my website loads in 5.5. So even at its best, Bluehost is still twice as slow as its competitors. You see, Google officially flags your website as slow and penalizes you if your response time is higher than 600 milliseconds. With Bluehost, I was averaging over 700 milliseconds, meaning on average, there's a 0.7 second lag on absolutely any input I do on my website. So my Bluehost website would stand no chance ranking on Google with all of these penalties and extremely slow performance for a $6 a month plan. For comparison, this is a Hostinger's chart for the same period and this is how your server response times should look. Stable, flat, and consistent, meaning each day you're getting what you're paying for. So what the hell is going on with Bluehost? Why are they so bad? Well, essentially it's corporate greed. The company has been sold to a larger enterprise multiple times by now and has rapidly switched CEOs ever since then. Since each new CEO introduces more and more greed tactics to maximize profits, because they know that the business will eventually fail as they're not providing a good service and marketing can only take them so far. So might as well squeeze and squeeze it hard. So at this point, Bluehost is like a former shell of what it once was. Basically just holding the name on the outside but having completely different management, employees and values on the inside. Their servers and setup aren't very good for you as the user but it's very cheap for them as a provider. They're using shared web hosting infrastructure that runs on Apache software. For starters, Apache is two times slower than Nginx and six times slower than Lightspeed. Most competitors that I've shown on my comparison table run Lightspeed, but it's more expensive and takes more knowledgeable engineers to configure and set up properly. So Bluehost just chiefs out with the oldest, easiest to run stuff that everybody knows and is familiar with. And since it's shared hosting, 
they're putting multiple users on one server, sharing resources. It's not bad in itself, but it becomes bad once you overcrowd. Because if the server has like 10 gigabytes of RAM, technically you should have like 20 users on there with 500 megabytes each, at least. But theoretically, you could put 40 users on there and hope some of them abandon their websites so they don't take up resources, some of them forget to set it up due to difficulties, and some of the users have minimal websites that require less than 500 megabytes. This way, you wouldn't need to buy a second server and you can still take the money from those 20 customers that want in. Bluehost's business model is built around scale. Get as many people through the door and keep the servers at 100% stress at all times. Because an idle server is a server that's not making money. And this overcrowding is the main reason why the response times differ so wildly. And there's no stability. It's because instead of having a predictable amount of resources that are always available to you or only loading their servers to 50% capacity like InterServer does to accommodate website growth, you're instead at the mercy of your server neighbors and their usage habits. So why exactly does everyone still promote Bluehost so extensively? Well, the short answer is money. And the long answer is, well, because they pay a lot of money for people to do so via their affiliate system. Bluehost is not a cheap provider. If you take a look at my Choice Plus plan, it seems like it's $5.45 a month or $65 a year, and that's true. But since web hosting is a subscription service, once my subscription expires, I'll have to renew at the real price, which is $22 a month or $264 a year. That's a four times increase in price. Add on top their very sneaky add-ons like this domain privacy that's free for one year, then you pay $12 a year for it. And this email box add-on that's free for three months, then it's $2 a month per email box. This is very clear why they give it away for free for a short period of time. It's so because you forget to cancel it or you don't even want to cancel it. And then they can bill it for the auto renewal. And these prices are absurd. You can get a much better deal somewhere else. And you shouldn't even be paying for Bluehost email because it's terrible in the first place. It becomes very clear to me that Bluehost makes a lot of money from people that do not know any better. Like there's even these sneaky ads that you must look at before entering your dashboard for a product you already paid for. While almost every web hosting provider does have an affiliate program where you can recommend their services and make a commission from the purchases made. That's actually how I monetize my channel. But naturally, the more expensive providers pay more and the expensive and really bad providers pay the most. Because their whole budget is allocated for marketing. According to bloggerpassion.com, people like Ryan Robinson make over $25,000 a month or over $140 a sale with Bluehost and his YouTube channel as well as blog aren't as big as the guys I've shown at the beginning. So they're recommending Bluehost because it sells due to the fact that Bluehost already runs a ton of ads and they pay a huge commission. Obviously, there's a big difference by promoting something you believe in and you think people might enjoy because there are a good company that might not have enough money for the traditional advertising route and promoting something that's expensive and objectively garbage just because they pay you a lot of money. On my channel, I try to do objective reviews and I just can't recommend Bluehost at any capacity. It's a bad provider, it's simple as that. And if you think I'm biased, feel free to check out uptime.emitreviews.com where I publicly host all of my test websites. Or just visit bluehost.emitreviews.com and see how slow the website loads for yourself. So please, don't buy Bluehost and don't pay attention to people trying to sell it to you. They do not have your best interests at hand. There are a ton of great cheap companies that you can use offering great performance, support and features. So watch this video next where I outline the best providers in every price range so you're buying smart. Good luck hosting your websites and I'll see you around.